Hello everyone, back to you into today's first video in GGMA Friday for today's first video. So as well as on a Friday, we've got your month ahead, log ahead, which is going to take us well into uh, May. Coming up later on this afternoon, we're going to have your regular week to 10 day video update. That'll be with you this afternoon. But we're going to have a look at the JMA and CFSV2 long range models for this first update. We're going to compare the two and see what the trends are. Uh, for the uh, next month. So we'll get on that for you right now. Uh, starting off with the uh, JMA, so we're looking at the 500 millibar height anomaly uh, flow charts from the North Pole view down. So this is the North Pole for the Northern Hemisphere just here, middle latitudes of the Northern Hemisphere are around there. These are breaking down into weekly periods. The first week period is going to take us from the 12th through to the 19th of April. Blue is extrapolating to below average heights, which is low pressure, yellow, orange and red, extrapolating to above average heights, which is high pressure. So for the week ahead, 12th through to the 19th of April, we've got a big trough of below average heights in the middle of the Atlantic. Low pressure is in the Atlantic Ocean, but then we've got a large area of above average heights, high pressure, sitting to our east and northeast. A flow on the jet going something like that. So a lot of dry and settled weather in uh, the week ahead, generally pulling in sort of an easterly flow, but eventually this might start to turn sort of southeasterly uh, or even southerly. So it probably gets warmer as we go through the course of the coming week. Then we go through to week two. This one taking us from the 19th through to 26th of April. Uh, and still anticyclonic signals, very strongly so. Above average height centred over and just to the northeast of the country. Again, we're bringing in east to southeast winds. So under this area of high pressure, you would expect a lot of dry weather uh, once again. And the wind, uh, the wind flow, the mean wind direction is probably coming up from sort of a southerly direction. So expect a lot of uh, pretty warm weather in with that too. So fairly dry, fairly warm signals there going into uh, in towards the end of April. And then finally we go through to weeks three and four. This is the 26th of April through to the 10th of May. And uh, with this one, we find that, again, high pressure is uh, dominant, but it's uh, changing its position again. So the position is going just to the west of the UK. Uh, that possibly brings in a little bit more of a west-northwesterly flow. There's no real trough of low pressure there. Um, low pressure kind of up here with these blue colours around Greenland down into Newfoundland. So we're more or less still under high pressure, but the position does change a little bit. It possibly turns a bit cooler as wind comes in from the northwest for uh, the early part of May. And maybe a little bit more showery, particularly for northern and eastern parts of the country, perhaps. So let's confirm all that with the temperature and precipitation anomalies. So again, we come back to week one taking us from the 12th through to the uh, 19th of April. The um, coming week, again, mind of 500 millibar height, and I mean, you can't see the North Pole uh, view, but that's off up there, but just had a look at the North Pole view down, of course. So uh, in week one, the first week, uh, 12th to 19th of April, we've got low pressure in the middle of the Atlantic with a distinct trough here, and then we've got high pressure sitting over and to the east of the country and also to the northeast as well. So anticyclonic signals for the week ahead. Temperature anomalies in the week ahead are coming out milder than average generally across most parts of the country. Nice mild week coming up. And precipitation anomalies may be a little bit more unsettled than you might have expected, particularly so the western parts of the country. Jamais is actually going for rather wetter than average week for parts of Ireland. Eastern parts of the UK look uh, a little bit drier than average. I suspect it, most of us will be drier than average in the week here. Uh, week two, which goes from the uh, 19th through to 26th of April, we have above average height centred almost over the top of the UK then. So again, it's another mild week. In fact, quite a warm week coming up there. Above average temperature uh, anomalies that uh, we see there with those yellow colours. So that's taking us to like one, two degrees above average and also dry as well. It looks like we're going drier and warmer than average from the 19th to the 26th of April. And then week three and four has above average height still close to us, but this time centered just that little bit to our west. The jet stream is possibly just impacting us a little bit more uh, in this period. Uh, but still, we are under high pressure, so not going to be too bad. Very close to high pressure, I should say. Temperature anomalies are above average, not as much as they are in week two, but still generally on the milder 
than average size. Um, precipitation on this is still looking quite dry as well. So really not too bad at all in the month ahead. A lot of dry, a lot of high pressure dominated weather and temperatures generally on the warmer side of average. Bear in mind that's a two weekly anomaly so it could be a bit transitional. Might be some sort of breakdown going on there between weeks three and four. But I think overall the scene also for the next month for the JMA are largely settled quite warm and generally on the dry side too. Let's see how that com uh, compares to the CFS V2. So, again, these are 500 millibar heights, and they're broken down into weekly periods. The first weekly period will take us from the 12th to the 18th of April. The coming week has above average heights centered to our east and northeast. Below average heights are in the Atlantic. The flow and the jet could be going something rather like that. So, again, generally a lot of dry weather on offer there and pretty mild as well. Winds are probably easterly at least to start off with, but later on they might turn southeast and start to bring up some warmer air. Week 2 also has a strong anticyclonic signal in line with what JMA is showing. So this is the 19th to the 25th of April. Above average heights again are centred almost over the top of the UK. Jet streams pushed off up there. So, I mean, it's going to be mainly settled. There may be some showery bursts around at times. Pressure does look a little bit weaker to our south, so through France down to Spain and Portugal. It's a little bit weaker with pressure there. That might threaten some rain or showers to southern parts of the country. I mean, overall, we're talking about an anticyclonic signal. So, again, let's expect a lot of dry and pretty warm weather to be on offer. Uh, week 3 is the 26th of April to the 2nd of May. Uh, low pressure up around Greenland and Iceland. Above average heights, high pressure very close to the UK. Possibly a bit of a weakening of the high pressure going on. So it may turn a little bit more showery. But again, we are generally under anticyclonic signals, so you'd expect uh, reasonably dry conditions. Just perhaps a little bit more showery. And then if anything, go through to week 4. 3rd to the 9th of May and the high pressure is strengthening again so a big ridge then centred over top of the UK low pressure continues to be up here and uh, the jet stream pushed well up to the north as well so that looks like it would be uh, potentially a very warm start to uh, May, very warm and pretty dry conditions uh, for May. Now we go through to temperature anomalies, uh, so this is temp temperature anomaly from the 12th to the 18th of uh, April and it's a little bit cold of an average actually maybe surprisingly so most parts of Europe are also cold on average but that's because of the easterly winds that we're pulling in in the next few days it will start to warm up next week but the model actually is showing a cold of an average week from the 12th to the 18th of April which is uh, quite unusual we don't see that all that often with the CFS V2 but definitely going for a cold of an average week in the weekend however by the time we get through to week 2 which is the 19th to 25th of April the temperatures are recovering we're going uh, warmer than average then as the easterlies sort of turn into south easterlies or southerlies. Uh, week 3, which is the 26th of April to 2nd of May, that one also comes out with above average temperatures. Then it gets really warm as we get through to week 4. This is potentially an early heat wave, 3rd to the 9th of May. Look how much warmer than average it is. That could be seeing temperatures up into the mid 20s Celsius there uh, in the early part of May. So that's kind of like getting on for 80 Fahrenheit, which is possible in uh, early May. So um, just a few hints there of a bit of an early May heat wave. We'll have to wait and see about that. It's week four, very long uh, way off, of course. And then finally, we've got precipitation. So um, week one, uh, precipitation, 12th to the 18th of April. Generally a little bit drier than average in the week ahead. And then we go through to week two, which is the 19th to the 25th of April. That is also coming out on the drier than average side. Week 3 precipitation is nearer normal as the signal is starting to weaken away. Uh, week 4, it's a weak signal as it, you would expect in week 4, but overall favouring drier than average conditions. So that first week of May, 3rd to the 9th, is looking pretty spectacular, I have to say, uh, with hints anyway of a very warm, possibly even hot, and dry spell of weather to begin the final month of the spring. It's week four, so it's a really long way off. In the more reliable time frame, though, I think we can say high pressure is going to be in control for the second half of April. Its position will be moving around a little bit week by week, but it looks like the signals are very much towards the drier and uh, milder side of things. Starting off quite cold with these east lids that have got at the moment. They're going to last into the weekend. It will be a cold weekend. But once that's out of the way, it looks like temperatures next week are lifting up. 
and then the singles are very much there as we go through the rest of April and evening to the start of May, maybe strengthening for the start of May for a prolonged spell of fairly dry and uh, warm weather to be on offer. Now, there will be, these are anomalies for Wikipedia, so there will be deviations on a day by day basis. Some of days, some days might have uh, showery bursts at times, but I think you can clearly see the trains between the two models are very strongly signalled to be on the drier side and also on the warmer side as we go through the rest of April and possibly even lasting into the start of May. Right, these are just a snapshot of uh, how models are looking this week. It could all look very different next week, so big, big old pinch of salt needed. We'll be back later on this afternoon with your week's 10-day video update, so come back for that then. But that's all for now, and thanks for watching.